ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الكلام كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه واله وصحبه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ساز الله عز وجل in this everlasting call o you who have attained faith be Allah conscious have awe for Allah have fear for Allah in your hearts and fear Allah and be conscious of Allah عز وجل as is worthy of his glory and of his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala and die not except in a state of islam die not except in a state of loving submission of yourselves of your hearts to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i remind myself and then you my brothers and sisters with the ultimate purpose for which you and i exist that ultimate purpose that when we forget we go astray we get miserable we lose our focus we lose our awareness of what is good for us and what is not good for us when we forget the very purpose for which we are here and that's a very simple equation وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ says Allah Azza wa Jal I created jinns and human beings for the sole purpose that they fulfill عُبُودِيَة to me and that عُبُودِيَة cannot be fulfilled if the most prized trust that Allah Azza wa Jal gave us and that is our قلب our heart is lost you lose your qalb and you lose everything in this world there is nothing that is worth losing your qalb your heart to anything to anyone except to allah azza wa jal and it is he azza wa jal who says through ibrahim alayhi salam rabbi la tukhzini yawma yub'athun يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون الا من اتى الله بقلب سليم except he who or she who comes to Allah ultimately with a qalb that is described by Allah as salim such an individual only will attain happiness in the hereafter and wallahi alladhi la ilaha illa hu such an individual attains happiness in this dunya and maximizes happiness in this dunya Allah azza wa jal tells us that the qalb salim and salim means the heart that health has become a consistent characteristic of it not only salim sometimes healthy but always in a state of health and we are not talking about physical health we're talking about the health of that qalb that characterizes this gift from Allah azza wa jal upon us sometimes called the spiritual heart and Allah azza wa jal wants this qalb to come to him clean and pure and salim healthy from all ailments that obscure it and that vague it and that cloud it and therefore we're not enable it to see truth as truth and to see falsehood as falsehood and when we die the body disintegrates 
But what goes to Allah Azza wa Jal is your qalb and mine. This external image will disintegrate. The internal image, the state of the qalb, is what continues to be, and that is with which we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus, my dear brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in one amongst the very many treasures of his eloquence sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and of his wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon him, told us, ثَلَاثٌ مُهْلِكَاتٌ وَثَلَاثٌ مُنْجِيَاتٌ وَثَلَاثٌ كَفَّارَاتٌ وَثَلَاثٌ دَرَجَاتٌ لكن سأتحدث اليوم في هذه الدقائق التي معنا سأتحدث عن الثلاثة الأول ثلاث مهلكات Three features or characteristics are destructive that is to the life of an individual and nay to the life of a society In other words, if any of these features are part of our characteristics, then it is on the way of destruction that we are headed, self-destruction before destruction of others. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam says, describing those three, one, shuhun muta'ah, ithnan, hawan muttaba'ah, al-thalith, wa i'jabu al-mar'i bi nafsih. Shuh un muta'a. What does shuh mean? Shuh is the inner state inside of you or inside of me that is characterized by keeping, by holding, by not sharing, by preferring to own and to keep rather than to give. That state of the inner self and then when it is obeyed, it becomes bukhl. When that inner state called shuh, as I described, is obeyed externally, it becomes greed or miserliness at the external level. And thus Rasulullah says, shuhun muta'a, and he qualified that shuh with muta'a, a shuh that is obeyed. Why did he qualify this Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because as human beings, many times or sometimes indeed, we are challenged by inner feelings of greed. But that inner feeling of greed, either we externalize it or we restrain it. Restraining it is an act of righteousness, is an act of maturity, is an act of wisdom, is an act of consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is an act of fear from Allah azza wa is an act of love for Allah azza wa is an act of consciousness of, what's await, of what awaits me. But when I let it loose, when I express it, when I externalize it, that is what becomes destructive. وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ says Allah azza wa what means whosoever is shielded and protected and guarded from his or her own shuh, such indeed will attain felicity, such indeed will attain happiness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi used to teach us also a dua, Allahumma qini shuhha nafsi. Ya Allah, protect me from the shuh of my inner self. One companion, I believe, maybe I forgot his name, maybe it was Abdullah ibn Umar, during Hajj season, as he was performing tawaf around the Kaaba, and we know of the uh, high recommended dhikr while we perform tawaf around the Kaaba, and he used to incessantly say, Allahumma qini shuhha nafsi, Allahumma qini shuhha nafsi. Allahumma qini shuhha nafsi, Allahumma qini shuhha nafsi. And when inquired from him, why did you keep only that duha? Why not other ad'iyah? And he said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because he was focused on that dua, 
He said, when Allah Azza wa protects me from the she, from the shuh of my nafs, then everything else will be fine after that. And Allah says, وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And if clause, if Allah Azza wa shields me from the shuh of myself, therefore I will attain felicity. And thus he insisted on the dua, رضي الله تعالى عنه وأرضاه. Number two, هوا متبع. هوا followed. هوا. And al-hawa is one of the most destructive ailments of the qalb. And that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam points out here as a destructive element in life. And in the pursuit of ubudiyah to Allah azza wa jal, indeed in pursuit of happiness in this dunya. And for akhirah, al-hawa is very, very destructive. وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ فَيُضْرِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Says Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَىٰ Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَنْ أَظَلُّ مِنْ مَنِ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدًا مِنَ اللَّهِ All of these ayat emphasize the fact by Allah Azza wa Jal that the hawa, and I shall explain in a moment what it is, that the hawa is destructive. The hawa is what leads to dissensions, to divisions, to khilaf and to furqa. The hawa is one of the major elements that lead human beings and that lead Muslims with, within themselves to divide and to be hostile against one another. The hawa is destructive. There is nothing good about Al-Hawa. Al-Hawa is that inner state of mind, again, whereby my views, my vision of life, my opinions, the way I see the world, the way I interpret the world, the way I understand the events of the world is in accordance to my own understanding, independent from something much more supreme and superior to it, namely Allah's shara. The opposite of hawa is indeed shara. The opposite of shara is indeed hawa. If I am not following shara literally, and I'm not following shara objectively, maqasidiyan, then I am following my hawa. And the most destructive force in a community, whether the human community or a Muslim community, is ittiba'u al-hawa. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again taught us many, many ad'iyah, many supplications, invocations in which we seek from Allah azza wa jal to shield us from the hawa of the nafs. From living in this life in matters of ibadat or in matters of adat, matters of pure worship, such as salah and sawm and zakah and dhikr and so on, or matters of mundane concern to us, contracts and business and marriage and so on, we seek refuge in Allah Azza wa to follow in all of these matters of life our hawa rather than the guidance of the shara. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, for example, that there shall come a time when Hawa will possess people in this ummah as, um, as the disease, uh, the rabies possesses a dog. And it does not leave any part of the body untouched, not a vein, not a tendon, or a tendon, I'm sorry. 
when he says sallallahu alaihi wasallam in what in the in the in the hadith alladhi rawaha ashabu sunan sayakunu aqwamun min ummati tatajara bihim al ahwa kama yatajara al kalab bi sahibih la yabqa minhu irq wala mafsil illa dakhala there shall come a time when some people of my ummah will be possessed by hawa and that hawa will infuse and be injected in every part of their being there is not a vein left nor a tendon left that is not that does not uh, that is not possessed by that hawa and al hawa is destructive Al-Hawa leads individuals to formulate views, to formulate theories, to formulate opinions. And sometimes they mean well. Sometimes they mean well. But however that lead to self-destruction and to destruction of environment, the human and the rest of the environment as well. Thirdly, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says wa i'jab al-mar'i bi nafsi the third destructive ailment and you all note these are ailments of the qalb of the heart i'jab al-mar'i bi nafsi that one is impressed by him or herself that one gauges or assesses himself or herself highly i'jab al-mar'i bi nafsi and therefore one leaves the reins of his or her nafs free and therefore one nourishes and continue to nourish that nafs and in particular that lower nafs in particular that cattle like nafs <coughs> and one continues to nourish that because one is satisfied with the nafs and therefore one is therefore disengaged from being able to detect and to discover the ailments of the nafs unlike freudian psychology unlike banduran psychology unlike libertine psychology islamic psychology teaches to hold the reins of the nafs وَأَجْمَعَ أَهْلُ الْمَعْرِفَةِ وَأَهْلُ فِقْهِ الْقُلُوبِ It's a consensus amongst the men and the scholars and women and scholars of the qulub, of the hearts in this, in this deen. It's a consensus amongst the ulama, the practitioners of the ulama of this ummah, that allowing the nafs what it desires and praising the nafs and assessing the nafs highly is the path to destruction there is no greater gate from which we enter to allah azza wa jal than the gate of al iflas wa tarku al da'wa then the gate coming to allah azza wa jal through the gate of i am nothing i have nothing i have no means to get me to Allah Azza wa Jal, to rely on. And then the quickest path to perdition, if you will, or to Jahannam, if you will, and before that to misery in this dunya is the gate of being impressed with the nafs, with the self. To exalt the nafs. Ihsan al dhanni bin nafs versus isa'at al dhanni bin nafs. Inna al nafs la ammaratun bisu illa ma rahima rabbi, says Allah Azza wa Jal. And therefore, when we assess ourselves and we are happy with ourselves and we are satisfied with the nafs, we will commit greater and greater violations against the very happiness that we are assumed to pursue and against certainly the happiness and the well-being of others as well 
and again, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam teaching invocations in which sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so profoundly, so profoundly and so subhanallah, so sincerely himself خير البرية صلى الله عليه وسلم خير خلق الله خير ولد آدم turns to Allah عز وجل in dua and to teach us also simultaneously when he says اللهم إني أعوذ بك من شر نفسي اللهم إني أعوذ بك من شر نفسي اللهم إني أعوذ بك من شر نفسي and it is not a dua that comes at the tip of the tongue, but it's a dua so profound from within that indeed it causes change. And Allah Azza wa Jal receives that dua because that dua it's from within the qalb. And the dua that does not come from within the qalb at the tip of the tongue, Allah Azza wa Jal does not respond to it positively. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indeed said, وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَقْبَلُ دُعَاءً مِنْ قَلْبٍ غَافِلٍ And know that Allah azza wa jal does not listen to or accept or receive or respond to a dua of an individual whose heart is not present and focused in that dua. اللهم إني أعوذ بك من شر نفسي يا الله I seek refuge in you from the evil of my nafs versus my nafs is great and yes there is a psychology and a social psychology and an educational psychology that teaches love your nafs no be very careful from the nafs Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught me and you also to also say Allahumma la takilni ila nafsi tarfata ayn wa aslihni sha'ni kullahu la ilaha illa ant Allahumma la takilni ila nafsi tarfata ayn Ya Allah, do not leave me to myself not even for a blink of an eye do not leave me to my nafs. Do not entrust me to my nafs. For if Allah Azza wa entrusts someone to his or her nafs, Allah Azza wa wills for that individual al khusran wal billah perdition and loss. He who or she who is left to his or her own nafs in the teaching of this deen that person indeed has been left on a course of self-destruction. And he or she may perceive himself of course or herself as being on the right course because one who is impressed by his or her nafs never realizes what is wrong when there is something wrong. And that will be taken to extremes even with Allah Azza wa Jal. Thalathun muhlikat, indeed. Three characteristics, if we are imbued with them, if we have them, then we have, if we have them all, we are on a full path of collision with Jahannam wal billah. If we have one of them, then we have taken a course on the path to absence of happiness, if I put it mildly, in this dunya and misery in akhirah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu tuba lil mustaghfirin. Seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is out forgiving, out loving and merciful. Astaghfirullah al-azim. الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله على عباده الذين اصطفى اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد 
وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد They are not difficult to remember my dear brothers and sisters three destructive ailments of the heart and Allah Azza wa Jal as Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says إن الله لا ينظر إلى صوركم وأجسادكم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم Allah Azza wa Jal says Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the meaning of the text Allah does not concern himself does not watch for your forms and external appearances but Allah Azza wa Jal is concerned with and watches for and looks at your qulub and consequently your action because the actions are the product of what lies harbored in the heart in the qalb actions whether of the tongue or of the external senses of jawarih are simply interpretations of what is in the qalb And therefore, the shuh, that inner state of greed, if you will, let us watch for it. And let us not allow it to externalize itself. Let us learn through sitting with people of ilm and of tarbiyah to learn how to do that. How to keep command and to hold the reins of the greedy self. Don't allow it to be externalized. And that hawa, that tendency within the self also to live by one's opinions and by one's views of the world and of things and of the events around you and around me. That tendency of live in the world in accordance to our own likes and our own dislikes, independent from shara, or simply sometimes paying lip service to shara. That's destructive. For Allah Azza wa out of his rahmah, he revealed the word, and he revealed the shara in order to free and to liberate the human from the yoke of his hawa in order to be truly abd of Allah Azza wa Jal and therefore to be truly free. Al-Shari'a wudi'at li ikhraj al-mukallafi an hawa li yakuna Abdan lillah. I must learn, I must educate myself, I must struggle within myself in order not to allow the hawa to be the guiding energy of my life. And it is a problem. It is the problem of all mankind. And as Muslims, we must know that the hawa is the major reason that leads and that has led to furqa and to divisions that are 73 as Rasulullah sallallahu mentioned in the famous authentic hadith. It is that hawa that draws the individual like a mad dog draws me into a world that I think is right or correct and it is not. And then my nafs, the way I assess myself and the way I gauge myself and what grade I give to my nafs. If I find myself grading highly my nafs, then I should realize that I am not dealing correctly with my nafs. And that's not what Allah Azza wa the creator of the nafs, said about how I should treat the nafs. And then when I'm focused on these and I work through learning the proper ilm and through practicing and training myself 
through the means of the purification of the inner self, then insha'Allah ta'ala my actions will be better in conformity with these principles. And as my actions will be better, you know what happens? They feed back into my heart because Islam is perhaps the first that determined the fact that conduct affect, affects thought. There is a feedback from conduct onto thought. Conduct shapes thought, makes thought, changes thought. Not only thought dictates conduct, but there is a feedback also. And the more I do of khair, the more my conduct is in consistency with the generosity of the self rather than the shuh of the self. With the shara rather than with hawa with doubting the nafs rather than with praising the nafs, then insha'Allah ta'ala that feeds back and magnifies those characteristics in my qalb. And insha'Allah, soon perhaps, hopefully before I die, my qalb dies in a state of salama, as salim And know, finally, my brothers and sisters, that the way or the day we were born, we were born to die. Do not forget, neither you nor me. We were born to die. The day we were born, the clock started ticking to die. So, let us not live to live, but, us, but let us live to die. Allahumma arina al-haqq haqqan, warzuqna attiba'ah. Allahumma arina al-batila batilan, warzuqna ajtinaba. Allahumma ja'alna min al-lazina istami'oona al-qawla fayittabi'oona ahsana. Allahumma ahdi qulubana, Allahumma tahir qulubana, Allahumma qina shuha anfusina, Allahumma tahir jawarihana, اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اجعل خير أيامنا وأسعدها يوم ملقاك اللهم ارزق أنفسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا ولا إلى غيرنا طرفة عين وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين اللهم فرج كروب المسلمين وآمن روعات المسلمين واستر عورات المسلمين وانصر المجاهدين في سبيلك في كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله